today, I'd like to talk about lithium polymer batteries. As I have come to a revelation in the last week. This used to be my charger. This is the charger that was supplied by Wakra when I asked for a LiPo upgrade for my particular model, which is the 36. This is what came in the mail. I've been using this for the last six months and considered it adequate. My batteries flew my helicopter for three to four minutes. This turns out it's a piece of crap. This needs to be tossed in the garbage. The reason I know it is a piece of crap is because I went out and bought one of these. This particular one is a Triton Junior. Now, it gives me volts, amps, and milliamp hours being installed into the battery. Now, don't get excited about milliamp hours. Milliamp hours are a measurement of a capacity of a battery. It just means that the battery is capable of delivering the nameplate milliwatt hours, milliamp hours, sorry, for a duration of one hour. So this battery has a rating of 1800 milliamp hours, so it has the capacity to deliver 18 milliamp, 1800 milliamp hours, or milliamps for one hour, 1.8 amps for an hour. The second rating is a, the C rating. C rating is just a discharge rating. Basically, simplest form, you take the C, you times the C value by the milliamp hour value, and that gives you the peak continuous output of the battery. So, for instance, this battery is 1800 milliamp hours, it has a 25C rating, so I times those two together, and ta-da, magic! I come up with 45 amps, how do I know that? Well, it's written here on the battery. But if you do the math, you'll find out I'm right. So what that means is this battery can continuously discharge at 45 amps, safely, without melting, and can deliver 1.8 amps for one hour at the rated voltage of the nameplate, 11.1. So, First of all, I think what I'll do is hook the charger to the battery, get the display up and lit, and show you guys what this should look like. So, what we're going to do is take the battery, and before we do anything, we're going to plug the two banana clips into the charger. So now that I've done that and I've connected it, I'm now going to connect my battery. You never want to do this the other way around, because you've got two bare copper ends here. You touch those things together while it's hooked to one of these LiPo batteries, and uh, you're going to be asking your wife to take care of your washroom woes for you. Okay, right. so I've connected the battery on. I've got the charger connected. I'm now going to use, I'm going to connect our little Astro Blinky. This is a real little simple device. And you look at it here, it says red and black. Blinkies or balancers always work from negative, most negative to most positive also for the batteries. So this particular battery, I have a little adapter here. I got that from my local hobby store. It cost about three, four bucks. It's no big deal to get. And I've made sure that I've terminated it so it's gone from negative, most negative, to most positive on my balancing wires. And I'm going to take this and plug it in. The same. Now I should get three lights. So that checks that the balancer is actually working. Now you see all the lights have gone out. That's because this balance is, this battery is actually in pretty good balance. Oh, here comes the light. So what happens is you put this on here, you hook it up, you get your balancer on, you get your battery connected to your charger. Now you take your charger, connect it to your power supply. Um, I hope you have a... So, we power the unit on. We can now see it says LiPo, charge, 1700 milliamps, 11.1 .1 volts. Now that was the last battery I did. So what I want to do is begin this. So I'm going to select battery type, LiPo, that is correct, so enter. I'm going to select my new amp hour rating. So this particular battery is 18 or 1800 milliamp hours, so I'm going to increase my rating. Oops. Okay, so now I'm rated at 1800 milliamp hours, 11.1 .1 volts, which is the standing voltage for one of these LiPo batteries. Hit enter. It's all in there now. Now what we're going to do, hit enter and hold it. It's checking the battery. The battery's going to work. And if you see the balancer, the balancer is also going to work at the same time. So what's happening is the balancer is shedding excess voltage off the cells 
in order to keep the evenness in them. A balanced battery will produce far more power for you for a lot longer, and you've got many, many more cycles out of your battery. So now if we look, so now you can see that we have the battery charging, the balancer is on, I'm charging a LiPo, the voltage in the battery at this point in time is 11.55 volts with a charging rate of 1.8 amps, one tenth the name plate of the battery. We've deposited 61 milliamp hours into the battery. We've been charging for two minutes and we're just going to let that cook. So, we've ended the charge cycle. You can see that the battery voltage is now 12.59. The charge current is 0 milliamps. There's nothing transferring into the uh, battery anymore. And the battery absorbed 1,569 milliamp hours, or 1.569 amp hours. You can see the balancer is pretty much balanced out. So when all the lights go out on your balancer, fully balanced. The voltage. Okay, so now that we've completed the charging, we're going to shut the whole system down. And we're going to do it exactly backwards what we did before. We're going to shut the uh, charger input off. We're going to disconnect the battery because, of course, if we pull the plugs first, then the uh, plugs will be live connected to the battery. The battery's now off the charger. The balancer appears to be done. Let's get rid of those two. Move the balancer. Ta-da! One ready to go battery. Okay, so for the reason of all this charging and discharging and everything else that I've shown you, is because I'm going to tell you how to use the batteries correctly so you can get, you know, the 300 odd cycles they tell you about. You notice that I've just charged an 1800 milliamp battery and I had to put 1500 milliamp hours into it. I also timed my flight. So what I did is I flew about as aggressively as I can fly at this point in time. And I ran the sucker to depletion. Now the reason I've done that is so I could measure the amount of milliamp hours went back into this battery. When you're running LiPo batteries, you don't want to exceed 80% of the capacity as a general rule. Really, I am told by the guys who get 300 cycles out of these batteries that you really shouldn't even exceed 60% of the capacity of this battery. So I now know that this battery gave me 1,500 milliamp hours in a flight time of about nine minutes. I put 1,569 milliamp hours into this battery in eight minutes of flying. So I'm going to take one five six nine, divide that by eight minutes of flying, which is going to tell me that I used 196 milliamp hours per minute of flying. Now, I want to leave in about 30% of the capacity into the battery and stop flying at that time. You never want to discharge your freaking LiPo battery until it's gone all the way dead because you just shorten the life cycle again. So, what I know is I have a 196 milliamp hour draw per minute. I'm just going to memory plus that. clear it. And I want to leave 30% in, so I take my original equation of 1569 milliamp hours per 8 minute flight. And I divide that, oh no, sorry, I'm going to times that by uh, 30%. And that tells me that if I want to leave 30% in the battery, I have to leave 470 milliamp hours into the battery. So what we're going to do is divide that by the memory, which was 196 milliamp hours per minute. So I have to take 2.4 minutes off of my flight time in order to leave that last 30% in my batteries. So about 8.5 minutes. I now need to take 2.5 minutes off of that. So what I'm going to do the next time I fly with this particular battery, I'll write this right on the battery so that the, I'll know in the future, this battery is good for five, uh, say, this battery is good for six minutes of fairly aggressive flight that I'm capable of now.